What is up, everybody? Josh here again, and today we have an Icarus Week 53 update. This week is the one-year anniversary of Icarus, and for that, we get decentralization. We also start the beta testing for dedicated servers. Let's get into it, shall we? Icarus Week 53 one-year anniversary update. Icarus Week 53 update. One year of Icarus and data decentralization. Data decentralization is here along with dedicated servers beta. Plus, they look back at the last 52 updates. Happy one-year anniversary, everyone! <laughs> Today marks a year since the launch of Icarus and the 52 updates they've made every single week since. And this week, they're giving power back to the players with data decentralization. All your data has been migrated to your local computer, shifting away from any kind of cloud provider reliant or server reliant and allowing some new features and ensuring that you can own your game data permanently. This opens the door of possibilities, but the most prominent one being including characters can now be able to be used across multiple sessions simultaneously and the new orbital exchange interface for exotic extractions and the dedicated server beta. And they also go on to say that this is a big update and will require a full data migration upon launch of the patch. So have a read through all the details below. So we've had the data decentralization and migration where they're releasing the highly anticipated data decentralization change. After you update and the first time you log in, you'll be forced to do a migration of all your player data to your PC. And going forward, all your data now will be stored locally, as in on your PC. And they go on to say how they shifted the saves so we can move away from a game as a service model, which leaves them open to internet outages and limits customization. This gives you true ownership of your player's character data. Migration will merge offline and online character and count data into a single entity, which includes your loadouts, inventories, exotics, rent, skill, refund tokens, etc. All currently active missions will be reset and not migrated over, and current progress on those missions will be lost. Your characters and your gear will not be lost. Those will return back to your select screen, where you'll have to restart any prospects you're currently in. They did add a new branch on Steam called Centralized, which will hold the last update in case players want to bring their characters out of missions, etc. This will not be present forever and will be removed in the fall weeks the way you find it is if you right click icarus and go to properties then betas and select centralized 1227 predated decentralization update to that and that means that you should be able to restore your characters and then go ahead and decentralize by selecting none your open world and outpost sessions are migrated over but will reset and remove your characters from the missions in progress. Your characters and your loadouts will be in the character select screen and loadout screen. And you can just go ahead and rejoin the game via the dropship by dropping down. Steam Cloud has been enabled for Icarus, so if you have multiple computers on which you play Icarus, make sure you migrate on your preferred machine first, the one with the most up-to-date outpost and open world content. And then Steam should then sync to your other machine. Jake Dodunsky, I think I pronounced that right, project lead, says we very much see this patch as providing players ownership over their own data and enabling everyone to play without having access to our servers. To enable this, we have had to make some concessions on various gameplay elements, but it also allows us to explore new options and provide new levels of customization and persistence that have not been available before. It has been a massive effort from the team to pull this through, and they have done a fantastic job. I want to thank everyone who has been with us over the last year providing feedback, enjoying the game, and being patient throughout the issues we have had, and hope you will join us for the next year as we continue to develop Icarus. So there has been a multiplayer hosting change, and Icarus will continue to be a peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer as it always has, which means that if somebody's on, you can always just join them, if they're friends with you, of course. But the original host always had to be online. From now on, the player who initially created the mission will be the only one able to resume it. Other players will not be able to carry on or launch a mission that another player has started, and the save data is now stored in the internal host's hard drive rather than in the cloud, the same way Open World and Outpost do. Of course, the the host should be the last person to leave the prospect. That way players are guaranteed to be able to recover their gear and claim any rewards and exotics as they won't be able to, to launch the mission later. However, they do now grant rewards immediately during missions to help. And of course, they say if you want to play anytime like before where they hosted the servers, they've introduced the beta for dedicated servers to cater for you. 
They go on to say you can manually share saves with other players as well. And the way you find it is usually your C users, whatever your computer's profile name is, app data, local Icarus save, player data, and then your Steam ID and prospects. Or you could just copy this right here, local app data percentage, Icarus save, player data, Steam ID, and prospect. All you gotta do is kind of right click that, copy it, go to any folder, go up top here to the bar, right click and paste it in there, hit enter. Or just go to your app data folder, guys. Click on your computer, go to users, go to your name, Monskate. Go to app data. If you can't see app data, click on view up top here and click on hidden item. So you can't see app data now. But if you enable hidden items, you can see app data. Go to local and go to Icarus. And here's your saved files. This is where all your saved files are, guys. If you want to do a backup, this is where you're going to go. You're going to go to your Icarus and save. As you see, you got your screenshots, prospects, your player data, your outposts, all that good stuff. If you want, just right click and copy this. Copy the whole folder. Mine was only about 432 megs, and this will back up your characters, saves, everything after you've decentralized. Just to let you guys know, it's a good thing to know where to back stuff up at. Take this, put it on another hard drive or a flash drive, call it a day. You've just backed up your whole entire Icarus game. I don't know if I'd even worry about this. I would probably just wait, honestly, till we get dedicated servers, which we do plan on having a few of them, guys. We're going to start out with two and grow from there if we need to. So also, we do have some gameplay changes. There's some new features you can take advantage of now with the new localized data. The new orbital exchange interface is a planetary crafted deployable that, when activated, allows you to call a dropship down to extract your exotics up to the space station. That means you no longer need to take them up with you on your dropship on completion of your project. Prospect. And mission rewards are now granted immediately on completion of the mission rather than sent to you in the inbox. And you're no longer locked to one mission or session and can and can be used on multiple active sessions simultaneously. So you can select any character from the character select screen for any session at any time. Insurance, of course, now only insures your items since characters can't be lost on prospects. Yes, characters can't be lost on prospects. There's absolutely no way to lose your characters now on prospects. I will repeat that. You can no longer lose your characters on prospects. Your character is always safe now. That's pretty cool, isn't it? But if you do not bring your items up with you in the dropship, they do stay on the planet until return. If you have insurance though, you can reclaim your items after five real-time days from the menu. And also, workshop items are no longer auto-repaired. When you return to space, you now have the option to repair them for 10 Rin in the inventory, or on the surface, you can repair them, of course, with the tier three repair bench. So the Orbital Exchange interface is a new item that you can learn. It is in tier two, and it's right next to the potbelly stove and the brazier. It requires 10 wood, eight rope, seven iron ignit, and seven copper ignit to make, and is made in the crafting bench. And it allows you to order a delivery pod for exotic retrieval. So this is the Orbital Exchange interface, and all you gotta do is hit request. It says no exotic delivery ship detected in the area. Click button below to radio in a request, and then you just hit request. And a pretty far distance away, it looks like it dropped down a exotic delivery pod. It's a hastily built drop pod for delivering prospectors exotics to the station for processing. And it has 30 slots available for you to put exotics and then deliver to the station. So didn't you just hit deliver to station? And there goes your exotics. So then you can go back to it and request it again. And this time it put it right in front. <laughs> really? You don't see the drop pod. Yours is outside? Let's go to where yours is. See where red marker is? Okay, that's where it was just a minute ago. Yours is over here? Uh, if yours is over here, I'll send it back up. Yeah, just hit deliver to station. Happy one year anniversary, everyone. 
Another thing I'll mention is that you see there is no longer a remove from prospect button. As we stated earlier, you can't lose your character anymore. So, so there is a new screen for you guys to use. If you're currently down on something, you can hit the resume button. Currently, I'm not. But you can also hit the new button, and it brings out a little side menu now that says open world, missions, or outposts. Outposts will, of course, take you to the old outpost screen. Missions will take you to the options to select Styx or Olympus. And open world will do the same. And then, of course, you have load, which will load all your old saves. As you can see, we're actually still on a deep vein extraction, was able to go over to an open world on the same character, which was awesome. I have all my open world still and my outposts. And it also shows that my character has these items on planet side. As you can see, the items you can see are available on planet side. And what you'd have to do is basically join that and then upload to get all that gear back. But it's open world so she uh, really you really can't ever lose the gear but if it was a mission right now yes be careful with missions guys until you get a dedicated server you want to make sure that everybody uploads before the host does or the person who created the prospect just to avoid any kind of problems or issues also it says my character is level 282 and his name that seems kind of high but it's probably low i don't get to play as much as i used to because of work but that's okay. I'm sure that's a bug. So that's the load menu. Of course, all you got to do is click on it and then hit resume prospect or delete prospect. So that's how you delete or resume those prospects. Then you also got join. So this is the peer to peer, as it says here, peer to peer servers. And this will show all the people who are playing Icarus currently, and you can join their game. So you also got some simple filters here, friends locked and out of date that you can check. You do a check mark or an x and then over here you have a another option which is dedicated service beta if you have the dedicated service beta version which you download in your betas page on steam and as you can see there is a ton of servers guys that people have made on the dedicated servers beta just tons of servers guys Guys, we're going to have some dedicated servers, multiple ones. We're going to have them hosted. I'll have details about that in our community discord. Check it out in the description down below. Join our Discord, guys. And I'll let you know whenever we pull the plug on that. Probably going to wait until after it comes out, maybe a week after the dedicated servers come out, which they may come out next week, but we'll see. Don't quote me on that. And if you see, if you click on your loadout, your loadout items are over here on the left-hand side. And any characters that have gear drop down on a prospect or an open world. See, this one is an open world, open world. For this one as well, all this gear was dropped down with. Of course, this is persistent too. That means if I damage this NRS Nev's pickaxe, it'll be damaged until we repair it. So that's pretty cool. It's going to show you where all your gear is and what the name of the prospect is and what kind of prospect it is. So this is a deep vein extraction mission. This guy's on D's outpost, which I just dropped down on not long ago. And the same character, these are all three the same character. This character is on my open world. And this is the gear he has there. So we're going to load our whole new world outpost. As you can see, when we click on it, there's all the gear we have. We're going to hit resume prospect. So we're going to go ahead and upload and return to our dropship. And we have a new screen that says returning to orbit will remove you from this world and delete all non-workshop items you're currently carrying. You can return, but we'll start with a fresh inventory and dropship. Are you sure you want to leave? And our interest Nev's pickaxe is still broken. So there's one or two options to actually repair this. You can either repair it with a repair bench on the planet side, or you can right click it and use 10 Ren to repair the item. This goes for this little knife. I've only used it just a few times, but it is damaged and you can repair it as well. It's only 10 Ren to actually repair your workshop gear now. And as you can see on the right hand side, we still got two more loadouts still. And also when Icarus starts up, we have a new splash screen and you're not crazy. This guy actually is moving right here. He moves ever so slowly. He's sneaky. Also just to let you know on the front screen here, you could do the migration again. Whenever you first start it up, it's going to say, hey, migrate, and then you'll migrate, and it'll go back to this screen right here. And then, of course, you can re-migrate again if you need to. So we also have the dedicated servers beta. Decentralization opens the door for dedicated servers, which 
are launching in beta today. Dedicated servers will let you host your own Icarus server to play with friends and you can control access, timing, hardware, and in future customize your settings. It's a whole new way to play Icarus multiplayer, but it's not compulsory. You can still continue to play Icarus multiplayer without a dedicated server as described above. They do have a GitHub server setup guide and they have a link here that you could click on. For setting up and running a dedicated server, you can go here. And there's some server admin commands. You can click on that to see those. It goes through and tells you how to set up a dedicated server with Steam CMD. They are going to be partnering with a range of dedicated server providers to offer rental servers. So stay posted for news and information on who those are. And just remember the application is still beta. They have some teething issues they may have to work out. And guys, we have went through 52 weeks of updates. And it's been a pleasure to make an update video for you guys. For all of those except for I think 7? Maybe 7 we started doing the update videos. And they made a very nice picture here that shows the one year anniversary and the new features that include open world mode, writable mounts, dynamic missions, in-game timer, and world bosses, and how much content and everything they've added into the game, how many talents they have, etc. They go through to tell you all the changes that they have made over the last year, including change to a bigger and bolder Icarus logo. Looking back, the work they've done it has been quite the journey, and Icarus, when it launched, is a different game than it is now. They've tripled the available missions, added an entire second map, two game modes, new dynamic features, new deployables, craftables, fixed thousands of bugs, and their players have invested over 34 million hours in game time. A number that still blows them away to this day. Andy Hall. The CEO states that releasing Icarus has been the studio's coming of age and as mentioned before the beta weekends last year, prior to our release, were a mixed blessing. On one hand, it demonstrated a significant ground of players eager for our content, but it also outlined problems with both the concept as well as the game itself. Most of all, the beta weekends crystallized what the game needed to be very effectively, helping end any uncertainty about what the game needed to be on the development front. You can think of beta weekends as lighting a fuse on an explosive. It can only last a finite time before it needed to end. They basically go on to say how they fixed the game and changed the route in which the game was going. And that each weekend they would be fortunate enough to see a number of content creators who stick with the project. Most of them they would say have at times and continue to be quite critical of the project. And that has played a very important role in the game getting to where it is today. They've asked tough questions and pointed out our mistakes or missteps. This has helped the team and studio to grow. I wonder who they're talking about. <laughs> And they kind of wanted to move away as game as a service or a live service model. In addition to uh, dedicated servers and decentralization, they also want community to do further work to pull the game apart and make mods and conversions for the game. They allow our team to make changes that were impossible before. They provide resilience, removing the requirement to support a complex and expensive backend. He goes on to say that they know they haven't always done the right things and they haven't always been as fast as you or we would like at fixing these mistakes. But they thank you for being here with us nevertheless. We're excited for the future of Icarus. I hope you are as proud of the team as I am. It's been a heck of a 12 months and their work on the game is a testament to their resilience. We watch your videos. We read your reviews. We look at your posts. We talk with you on Discord. Together, I'm confident we'll reach a point we could really build Icarus into the game we all want. Dean Hall, CEO. Well, Dean, if you're watching... Honestly, it's been a pleasure for the past 12 months. And we know that you know, some of the devs came into our stream the other night and they listened and we had changes the next week. And I'm ecstatic about it. Yeah, you know, Icarus has got its problems and its flaws, but it looks like it might be about time for me to probably give her a review. Guys, we're going to continue to be doing Icarus content until we decide not to. And also, thank you for making one hell of a game. Also, this week we got the change log. The change log. The change log. Hey, it's 5.45 a.m., okay? Give me a break. Under the new content this week, we got the new logo that we showed you on the splash screen there when you first load up Ikerly. Icarus? Icarus. When you first load up Icarus. They did add server settings for preventing non-admin players from either launching or deleting prospects. And they changed the insurance timeout from 14 days to 5 days. They finally updated the workshop repair kit to tell it to go to the repair bench. 
not the fabricator or machining bench. They did modify rocket saving to clean up rockets for players who are no longer on the prospect. Yay, that's a great change. They also fixed burnt trees from being incorrectly loaded after rejoining, which caused clones to not see them. And as we stated before, switched to a clean version of the new Icarus logo, added panning smoke and shifting character key art in the front new logo. And under fix this week, looks like they made some changes and fixes the rocks and cliffs. And exotic delivery ships now only carry exotics in their inventories. They fixed the bug where you couldn't shoot through the fortification gate. And fixed the bug where creatures couldn't navigate properly through the semi-destroyed variant of the fortification gate. And in the future content this week, Adam Blueback attack slam audio and animation notifiers. Creature looks pretty cool. Set up a basic recorder component. Needs testing on reload. Looks like it worked a little bit on the Scoria, Obsidian, and Clay. And they added the blue back calls. May adjust once behavior is in game. Added initial setup for Snowstalker amount. What's a Snowstalker? And that looks like that's it for this change log. And guys, that's it for this video. Don't forget if you like what you see to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Guys, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. It doesn't cost you a penny to subscribe. If you find any value to our channel, please subscribe. I think last time I seen it was 75% of people who watch the videos don't subscribe. And we put hours and hours into our content, me and Mrs. Streamer here. So if you find any value in the content, please subscribe to the channel. Liking the videos also helps with the YouTube algorithm. And commenting on the videos also helps. Even if it's just to let me know how I'm doing the videos wrong. If you have any suggestions for the channel, or if you have any suggestions for us, let us know in the comments down below, guys. Like I said, also, we're going to have a one-year anniversary video coming up soon, and I also have about two to three other videos planned for Icarus. And sometime soon, once we get our processor and motherboard situations squared away, we're going to go ahead and start releasing the mission videos as well, too. So got a lot of videos planned for this upcoming Icarus year. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully we'll see you next time. Peace.